the game is that players are expected to self-police their fouls and self-police their infractions. There are no referees, and so part of the spirit of the game is that the players are actually self-refereeing. The uh, spirit of the game is making fair calls and being able to self-officiate in a productive and fair way. And it's a, it's a very interesting dynamic because basically it's asking players to put aside their intensity for winning and live with the fact that they have to be honorable. I think part of the spirit of the game is the competition of it and not just being there uh, to make friends or to have an easy time, but actually challenging yourself. The spirit of the game is basically respect for your opponent. You know, you call your own fouls, so you need to have a level of understanding with your opponent if you want to both enjoy the game together. Yeah, Ironside is a team that has been probably over the last four to five years wanting to reach the top. Um, as a team, this year we're really focusing on three principles, more, team, and now. Nothing changes, more team now, let's go. Come on, let's go guys, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The way we see it is you can really always be giving more. You can always be pushing yourself harder, holding yourself to a higher level of accountability in terms of what you can bring to this group. Team is really about doing it for the team, being a teammate, not focusing on just yourself, but how do you help us produce a successful team and now is very much tied to winning the moment. You know, not focusing on the outcomes, really focusing on what's at hand at any moment and how we can be the best we can as teammates to win that moment. I play to be on teams like Ironside. I love, I love the, the people, a lot of the folks are my best friends. Uh, it's my first year playing with my brother on a team, which has been pretty amazing. Um, so, I don't know, special place to be. I have found that the intense relationships that have been developed here on the field and off the field are really precious. I can't imagine people being closer. I can't imagine people having to put aside their ego more and do things that are best for the team. And the relationships here are extremely deep and profound. And I've seen it off the field, uh, and it's real. Boom! Goddamn. Did you get that on the GoPro? Yeah! Hell yeah! Uh, playing for Ironside is pretty awesome. They definitely hold the, the standard of excellence to almost perfection. And the whole team will get on you if for even the slightest mishap. It's like, it's not even a negative thing, it's just like, we want to play perfect all the time. I think Ironside's staple is being a team that works with consistency and uh, sort of a lot of systems and structure. You know, we kind of play an old style offense, um, just, you know, straight, very, very vanilla offense, um, a lot of man defense. Um, our, our zones are very simple and usually not for a whole point, so uh, we, we kind of play very, very old school. We look to execute really well and sort of to a T, um, which sort of, it's actually also what defines a lot of the best teams out there, is, is that, that same kind of thing. You have to play above the spirit of the game. Like, there's no nonsense, there's no, like, we don't even want to foul on the mark, we want to play the game the right way. And so, from that perspective, like, I've grown a lot as a player playing in their system. You know, even if they use the vert stack, which I'm not a huge fan of, I have learned a lot from the system. Giving it 100% and doing it well is probably what inspires me the most, is, is leading a team in the right way and managing a team's culture to respond in the right way in the end is matters more to me than anything else. And, and I also believe that doing it the right way will lead to a success on the field and off the field.
I have not seen them yet reach their full potential. And so what is interesting about watching Ironside is how every play, every game, they're always trying to be better. And at some point, and I know they'll break through, they'll be the best team in the world. That's their goal. And as long as that goal continues to be a part of their passion, they'll always get better. We're in Italy. Uh, we're at the World Ultimate Club Championships. We're one of the club teams that uh, qualified from the U.S. Uh, we're surrounded by the best quality teams from the top cities in the top countries. This is, I think, the largest grass ultimate tournament in the world. Um, there's about four and a half thousand players here, 160 teams. 35 fields, and I think it's an amazing tournament. Despite there being the rain and some games being canceled, and really there being a ton of logistical nightmares of people's flights getting canceled and housing being a mess, um, it, you know, we've had this big team effort of a lot of different people have contributed to making it work out. And now that we're in the tournament, it just feels like we're so fortunate to be here and having it work and being on a great team and getting to compete in this sport in one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. So then even to just get to play Frisbee on top of all that, you know, bonding with great guys and um, is pretty, is even better. Minimize the cushion, especially in the front of the stack. Let them feel you. Be physical, get in their way, make it difficult for them to cut. Offensively, play our game. We get the turn, we go from fiery on defense or chilly on out. Get the job done. Bell's gonna ring in two minutes. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on, Boston. Come on, Boston. Come on, Boston. The word frisbee puts it in the category of being more playful, not a real sport. You know, perhaps uh, on the margin of what one considers to be athletic. And that was my first reaction. But when you actually start to get into what is required of a frisbee player and what's required of being a good ultimate player. It's at the highest level of athleticism. Let's remind ourselves every time something is challenging, we have an option and we take the right road. Alright, that goes for energy, that goes for stepping out on throws, that goes for pushing into position, that goes for locking down. Take the right road this half. Every game to one, take the right road, alright? something that you can't really describe about running and chasing down a frisbee that's just floating in the air and you're sprinting as hard as you can and you dive as high as you can and you make that catch and that's a play in football you see every now and then here you have somebody sprinting 50 yards and they dive and make that play and you know you just see it happen over and over and ultimate and it never gets old it's just amazing to watch uh, and it's amazing to be a part of Let's keep bringing it 
Every moment you can reset and bring that. You can control if we have it for 100%. We feel so fucking good when we have it for 100%. It feels honestly a little crazy, right? You lose a little bit of control of yourself and you just play. Let's bring that 100% of the time. That energy I just felt now in the huddle felt really good, right? We're getting good vibes out there and we're rolling with you. Every moment is a choice, right? It's our it's about our energy, choosing to be high energy, choosing to be consistent to the sideline, on the field, being close to your guy, let, dictating where he goes rather than following him around. We we'll make sure we take that attitude in tomorrow. It's a choice. It's a choice how we come out tomorrow. It's a choice where we are on the ramp. Let's ramp it up. have anything super special to say because I feel like over the past five games we have proven that point after point we can all check in from the sideline and contribute. We can all play seven men on the field communicating, running hard, locking our guy down, cutting hard, delivering the disc. We have shown that to each other, right? We have 26 guys in this huddle point after point to do it for each other. There is nothing that can stop us when we control that option. Right, point after point, make the choice to do it for each other, do it for more. Yeah. 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 Buzz Bullets have set their sights in this tournament no less than to become a champion. To Neff, hops in for the goal, Ironside starts it off right. Dubs goes up, Matsuno climbs the ladder. Lapinos goes up and over. Is he in? No, not yet. And finding Malachek in the back of the end zone. Going deep, Corono sends it deep. For Shiba in the end zone. Quick spike in the goal. To the end zone for Malachek. Tipped. Buzz Bowles back in this game. Repholtz gets it back. Repholtz to Marquette. They find the open receiver. Repholtz gets the D and the assist for two. Quick movement. Trying to utilize their quickness, and they do for the easy goal. Five to three. To the end zone. Matsuno with the speed. Matsuno. Was he in? That looked into me, but. Some of the people on the sideline are calling it in. I believe that is the correct call. So bullets bring it to within two. Flip to the end zone. Matsudo open for the goal. McNaughton gets it on the second effort. Matsudo rips it down. Defender has position. Misses it and falls right into Neff's hands. His iron side will take half, nine to six. Collision and makes the catch. That scuba, open receiver, Kapinos for the goal. Naka, swing for the score. Buzz bullets stay close for Foster. Lays out, can't make the catch. Long time since we've seen a turnover. Corono sends it deep to the end zone. Quick score, Buzz Bullets respond. Stubbs goes up, and Matsudo with the block. Receiver with steps, Corono. He's going to run it down. Hops into the end zone for the score. Buzz Bullets break. Capinos reads it correctly. Ironside back up by two. Into the end 
inside break, finding Foster. Irons right back up by three. To the end zone. Wide open again. Kichikawa, the king. Puts Ironside back in. They're up 15-12 in this game to 17. the goal, back within one. Neff with the hammer, outstretched Taylor, the crowd back in it. The end zone, tied at 15. The Buzz Bullets have made this a game. Ironside quickly responds. Indeed by Ironside, miscommunication. Wallach with the block. Foul called on the play. That was a clean block. To the end zone for the score. Double game point. 16 all. For the Japanese, Takahashi with the disc getting set to pull. Games like these are why these two teams came to this tournament. Those both will have to make a stand here. Taylor, Alicek to the end zone, and Taylor turfs the disc. Huge mistake. called Malachek comes through. McCarthy is incensed on the sideline. This one will certainly be discussed. Everybody at the tournament is watching this game at this point. Foul on the mark by Marquette. Takahashi and Buzz Bullets pull it off. Abe calls the foul. Takahashi inside break for the win. Travel call. They knock off Boston Ironside. Buzz Bullets, I just want to say that uh, as I grew up and as a lot of the Ironside players in this huddle grew up, we dreamed of playing tight games with the Japanese team on a world stage. And um, today we got just that. It's a, it's a big reason why I play. It's a huge reason why I play is to play in those type of games, be in those type of fights with you guys. Thank you for a great competitive game. Uh, we love you guys, we love your spirit. We wish you best of luck in the rest of the tournament. So give it up for the buzz bullet on your side. As someone, as an observer or someone was on, who was on the field during that second call, it's hard, it's hard to let it go a little bit. You know, we thought we made a play in the field, and when you make a play in the field that's playing within the rules, you want that play to be upheld. Such important plays can happen so incredibly fast that without slow-mo replay and that sort of thing, it, it can be very difficult to follow. Whether there was contact before, I didn't think so, but there was contact like when he hit the ground, 
And so when you get wrecked like that, your first instinct is to call a foul because you, you get contact when you hit the floor. But then it's like, okay, was did he actually D it, you know? I think the only way I could have done that better is if I just caught the disc, you know? Because then there'd be no question of what happened. Since I missed it, you know, and then it's open to interpretation. The reason that Spirit of the Game works is because of trust. And when it, it's very frustrating when you feel like the sort of trust behind it has been broken. And that, that's, what, that's what we're reacting to. Is, uh, it's, it's not just, like, people can have differing opinions on what happened and be truly, like, truly entrenched in those opinions in a good way. They thought different things happened, and that's okay. He needed to make that call because they needed to keep possession. It's a 16-16 game. You know, there's, there's nothing you can do about it, you know, from that standpoint. And we never should have let ourselves be in a situation where two, uh, two bad calls could lose us the game. So, managing bad spirit, I think you sort of have to trust the system. You have to trust the community, the culture. And what really matters is that it does work almost 95, 98% of the time in a really great way and that it actually works at a higher percentage than a lot of refereed sports. Um, you know, all year our focus has been on winning nationals. It's nice to be here, it would be fun to win this, but our focus is on winning nationals, much more important than winning worlds. So, um, you know, if this helps us learn and get better and helps us win nationals, it's totally worth it. Uh, just like a lot of people, it's hard not to think about the game yesterday. Uh, I am proud of us for stepping up and playing the way we did. Uh, I have a hard time, I'm, ha I'm having a hard time not going down the path a little bit about the calls and all that crap. Uh, and in the end, I, I'm leaving this tournament with a feeling of there's more in the tank. If anyone doubts that we can do it this year, get out of your head. Think about the championship. That's what we want. We can fucking do it this year. And it's going to take hard work. It's going to take focus. It's going to take pushing each other at practice. It's going to take getting better, it's going to take breaking patterns that aren't good that we're already in and carving out new ones. But we can fucking do it. If you think we're just going to coast through this season, we're not. Let's fucking work. There's a lot of room. There's a lot of room on that ramp. It's ours to take. Every step's going to hurt, but it's ours to take. Eight weeks, let's go. Let's go. I, I know that I push hard. I push people hard to get better. And sometimes that can be uh, with intensity and a little bit of a, more of a fist than a uh, like cuddly hug. Um, so thank you guys for bearing with me. It's been an amazing experience with you, with you guys. I love you. I love this team. Um, I can't thank you enough for making it special. Well done.